Hello and welcome to episode one of Eternal Reaches, the Garblad Games Mongoose Traveller Second Edition role playing show. I'm Pete the Referee. I'm Ben and I'm playing Azar White Eye, the Trin Rebel. I'm Sam and I'm playing Glissa, the Redol Relic Hunter. I'm Adam, I'm playing Stoa Husk, the uh, Cherubix Reporter Stroke Truth Seeker. I'm Roger, I'm playing Commander Magnus Alexanderson, the Human War Hero. I'm playing Brandon Parsons. I can't find what it is. I am. And your name's Simon. Here is Simon. And my name is Simon. <laughs> Simon never gives his name. He becomes the character. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. Corporal Parsons. Space a crewman. <laughs> I'm a space a crewman. Yeah. I'm actually a galactic mariner. Galactic <laughs> mariner. <laughs> yep. Uh, and I'm Shan. And I'm playing Jackson Singh Gray. Was it? Oh, it was yeah. Singh Gray. Yeah. Singh Gray. Sing Gray. Yeah. Great. If you do this, if you do this, it's written down there. And now oh. above you. Above oh, is it above you? It's here for us. It's above us. Do this to me. Do it. Okay, so this is episode one of season one of Eternal Beaches. Um, we have got some character creation and team creation episodes in the playlist. If you haven't seen those, go and check those out. That will give you a bit of a background on who everyone's playing, and you can see all the stats on the screen over there, uh, and what they're playing, and how they know each other as well, which is important to the story. So, first things first, I just want to point out the awesome map that Simon printed off for us. Uh, here on the wall behind us, nicely positioned where we can see Creer, which is the starting system of the game, and Cusk, which is your first target for a mission. Uh, and we'll begin our adventure on Creer. So, you guys are the crew of the Aurora, which is a far trader ship, which is currently docked at Far Harbour, which sits in orbit of Creer, which is a nice, mostly water world, so it's very blue, um, with kind of skipping clouds moving across the oceans. And Far Harbour is a, uh, an exaggerated H shape, with the central bar being very thick, where lots of the activity and all the trading goes on, and the two bars sticking out either end are where ships dock, generally. Um, this is an old United Colonies uh, starport, so it's fairly well built originally, but it's now a few hundred years old, so it's a little bit uh, tired, let's put it that way. However, um, the Creer Council have put lots of effort into repairing it, and it's now fully operational, and a small group of ships has been um, reconditioned and ready to go out. And the scout service and the exploration departmental heads have sent out ships to explore. Some of these ships have gone to Cusk, which is where they found a planet which they believe may have some remnant technology on it. And you have all been um, met by a uh, Fodlani chap, who's a uh, reptile, a humanoid. If you don't know the species, go over to the website where you can download the PDF. And Shan is doing us some nice artwork for the species. You can see that on the Facebook page. A couple of plugs. Uh, a chap called Lofax, um, who is from the exploration department. He's actually a logistics manager. Uh, and he has introduced you to <coughs> Glissa. Sam's character. If you'd like to describe what your character looks like, Sam. Okay, so my character is a redoll, so they are slightly um, amphibian-looking like yep. people. Um, she has light green skin, and um, she's a female one. Um, she's probably, uh, she's in her early 40s, mm -hmm. um, and um, normally wearing fairly sort of expensive clothing. Mm -hmm. um, she does, however, have um, a noticeable slight weakness down her left-hand side. Possibly a result of a previous accident or injury. Okay. Um, Lofax is sort of in his mid 30s um, and he has obviously been sitting behind a desk for a while. Um, he is wearing fairly uh, smart kind of suit, uh, nothing fancy. Um, obviously, some kind of mid level management position who's sort of busy looking after things. And he's been sent by the department head to introduce you to Glissa. So then if everyone wants to describe what the character looks like, and we can start with uh, Ben. Okay, Azar is a 
very rangy looking uterine, quite thin for their people. Um, noticeable scar over his left eye and a cybernetic replacement for that eye, which is where he gets the nickname from. Cool. Um, slumming it a little bit in combat boots and a, an environment suit, limited number of possessions, should we say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, has dyed blue head hair, although furred all over, mm -hmm. has sort of dyed the top bit a dark blue colour, mm -hmm. um, otherwise quite dark furred. Green drab suit, mm -hmm. um, wearing a Gauss pistol on one hip, mm -hmm. if such is allowed by Craig. On your, on your ship, on your ship. Okay. Right. Okay, cool. Right. Yes, so uh, Star has quite an old Troll Rix. Uh, he's a big black insect type person, mm -hmm. sort of eight feet tall, I think, and sort of big as well as cross. Uh, okay. So he's like I say, a very black, shiny kind of big. Like, so it's kind of old, so it's kind of the, the sheen's gone off, and the edges have been kind of worn down. They've gone a bit yellow, the sort of the edges, and there's loads of. There's probably on the, the back of his shell and stuff, there's loads of like holes and different things. Because Jerry's going to tend to wear much clothing, they just wear straps mm -hmm. and stuff, the whole thing. Um, he does have like this cloth thing that has like his old company that he used to work for, sort of logo on it, but it's uh, normally around the ship. Um, but yeah, he looks kind of battered and old, but still quite alert. So big people. Yeah. Right, um. Magnus is a reasonably tall, he's about six foot two, with sandy blonde hair, very ice blue eyes, clean shaven, in his late thirties, uh, very impeccably well dressed in fact, in a very well made protect suit, which is cut in a very militaristic fashion to reflect his days in the navy. Some piping on the uh, lapels, maybe. Yep. <laughs> Full thing, epilepsy, you name it. Uh, um, Medals? Has he got his medals on? <laughs> no, he's, he's not she is a foreign dignitary. She is a daughter. You know she is one of the distant daughters, you know. Okay, younger son meeting someone, posh, I will have not my physical medals, but the ribbons. Okay, yep. Uh, on the suit, and I'm assuming I'm not supposed to be carrying weapons, so I'm well, armed. From the ship, then. Okay, Am I on your ship? Yeah. Okay, okay. then. She, uh, she's been brought to your ship. Okay, then yes, I have a pistol, a, a flechette pistol holstered at my hip, and a very expensive looking holster. Okay, is the holster more expensive than the gun? Is it that kind of expensive? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. Uh, so my character is quite slender, uh, human. Um, uh, if we're on the ship, I imagine I'm, I'm hauling, uh, hauling some tools around trying to fix something, or trying to find something to fix, or trying to look busy <laughs> uh, until someone tells me to fix something, and then I'll know what I'm meant to be doing. Uh, that's kind of what I'll be doing, unless someone tells me to stand there and look hard, in which case I'll... But that's about it. Cool. Right, so I'm um, average human, average height. Mm -hmm. Jackson is um, Indian descent. Mm -hmm. um, but like maybe a bit mixed, but mm -hmm. not really sure. Um, and then, um, yeah, average height, average build, wearing a Protex suit as well, but not as well as uh, tailored yeah. as um, Magnus is. Um, but designed in such a way that it's, it's probably like, you know, to blend in that kind of uh, average sort of cut grey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's it's grey. probably grey, like a dark grey grey that isn't yeah, supposed to. Yeah. But designed not to stand out. Yeah, yeah. 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 shoes that don't shine. Yeah, kind of thing. Okay, so you guys are standing in the uh, entrance to the cargo bay, uh, and Blissa and Lofax are kind of standing just inside the station. You guys have met them in on the edge of the cargo bay. Brandon, you're probably in the background fixing something. As are you're probably moving some boxes around. You've got a cargo that's been loaded into the ship, so there's lots of boxes. Lots of crates, lots of containers dotted around various different loads. Uh, you've also got uh, mail that you're taking with you, a very precious cargo that you've put in a nice spot near one of the, um, the passageways down from the bridge, so you can keep an eye on it. And uh, yeah, that's your most precious cargo at the moment. Um, I'm and taking out most of the cargo, cargo probably over there. a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, how much were you actually carrying? <laughs> like 30 tons of yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so there's quite a bit of it. Yeah, all red. 
ready to propose <laughs> policies. Uh, and yes, so Lofax is saying to you, um, Captain, um, it's very kind of you to accept to take um, the glitter on the, the, the short trip to Cusk. Um, the exploration department uh, are very interested in something that's been discovered. We, we have had some anomalous readings on the planet's surface near the habitats on the northern continent that this, the storm haven is in geosynchronous orbit above. Um, and we believe, as Glissa was inconvenienced uh, and had to be here for a while, um, we would kindly offer to fund her medical bills if she would uh, just take a short jaunt down to what? Cusk. I think that you've, you've changed your hair. I think we've met. Um, yes, really? it's a pleasure to see you. Again. Yes, a lot of years ago, uh, and you were, didn't you? Were, you've got a few more medals than that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> some I'm, years back. I'm oh, really? fortunate to have had a successful career, Mum. I, I think you're being modest there, I have. sir. <laughs> no, the commander uh, rescued me from nearly ending up as dead as some of my party already were some years back now. Oh, well. Um, I'm glad to have brought two old yes. acquaintances together again, then. Ah, this is fortuitous. Use your hair. <laughs> uh, that happens. <laughs> I can quite understand. Yes, excellent. Um, well, as I said, um, I, I understand you've made other arrangements for cargo and passengers and everything, but if you could please um, ensure that uh, Lady Glissa here does arrive safe and sound, um, that would be excellent. I also understand that a, uh, another scientist by the name of Grafe is uh, travelling with you. Um, I believe that he may also be involved uh, with this uh, mission, but on a lesser extent. He's not uh, as such a, uh, an expert in remnant uh, relics as uh, Glissa here. So uh, please look after her. Uh, that's very much appreciated. I will, I will try not to get explosively decompressed this time. <laughs> I'll see to the refund of your medical bills. Thank you very um, much. And that, that will be, um, yeah. So that, that will be fine. So he says, right, well, okay. Um, I will uh, take a leave now. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and Commander, and sort of nods. He's sort of seen some of you around. He's a logistics manager, so he's kind of there looking after ships coming in and out. It's part of the exploration department, so some of you will have met them before. But... Um, you you know him well. Um, right. He heads off, and you're there with Glissa, your new dignitary that you need to take to Cusk. Yeah, uh, welcome aboard the Aurora, Mike. Thank you. I'm travelling well. Oh, uh, if, if I'm travelling well to be like, can you show me where I can stay things? I've bought like, my own um, uh, environment suit and things for when we get to Cusk, because it's a little bit better. Uh... Of course. Um, Corporal? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I shall, I shall <laughs> mosey on across. Yeah. Bit stiff, but um, I'll take your bags, Mom. Thank you. There's a few station crew moving around, putting the last few boxes in, um, and one of their supervisors comes over and says, "We're just about done, sir. Uh, so, you know, ten minutes will be finished." Excellent. Kind of, good work. Carry on. Does a cockney tip tip of the hat type <laughs> thing, and then heads off. Okay. Um, I'll show you to your quarters. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So you've got a uh, residence on the upper deck um, in one of the um, nice rooms uh, and you take her up and you're one of the station crew or someone helps. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. To carry all your yeah. gear. Yeah. I probably can't carry that suit mate, by myself. No, but that'd be in some kind of case. case. Uh, the ship is very clean. With, you might notice on the way a couple of droids. Around moving cleaning. around, cleaning. Yeah. One's hoovering, well, yeah, one's hoovering behind them. I will show you where your bag suit is stowed, is oh, stowed right. as, it, as, as, as we kind of leave them by the exit. Okay. That's probably a good plan. Sure. We'll do that. Excellent. Okay, so the rest of you are seeing to the sort of more mundane duties on the ship, and you are hailed by the, um, the central control. Of the um, of Far Harbour, who inform you that you are cleared to depart whenever you wish to, 
Um, if there's anything that you keen to do on the station before you leave, then feel free. But you are now clear to leave. Excellent. Then I will come through to the ship. All hands prepare for uh, the journey. We are setting off. We jump these ribbon here. We have to fly well, out. We fly out, we fly out for a couple of days. And then we jump these ribbon. Otherwise, it's a really <laughs> short game. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the engineer, you could try jumping from here. <laughs> yeah. Probably wouldn't go well. <laughs> you could roll well and be fine. <laughs> Um, you could have a simulation life. to see what would happen. <laughs> no, that was a big explosion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's just go for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Save a couple of days, we're scheduling lives, what could do go wrong? <laughs> I will... Hello, welcome to Traveller, season uh, zero. Yeah, yeah. 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 one, two, episode one. <laughs> <laughs> New crew, mission. As the, as, the, as the astrogator, I will, um, I, will, I will plot the course of where we need to go to, to jump. Mm-hmm. Before we then jump, okay. can I? Um, yeah, I uh, would like we... to just make sure our jump drive is okay. You've um, probably got a good day. Yeah. Uh, once, <laughs> we, uh, once we once we jump, the jump. Assuming you don't need to control the ship, it's just kind of travelling. Yes, yeah. it's just in the jump <coughs> space, heading yeah. Yeah. heading there. Okay. Yeah. I, I will pilot yes. us out. Okay. I will take my time doing it. Uh, it's it's all smooth. smooth. I'm trying to impress. Uh, I have the distance here. I'll probably be still on the screen. I am chair of the sensor, sensor console. <laughs> 1,000 <laughs> diameters. Or 100 diameters. Before you can jump. It's 100. 100. Okay. Yes. In which case, you need to get to... You need to go for... Uh, at 1G, you'd need to go to a sort of 18 hours to, to get clear yep. when you've got a safe jump distance. So, you start to fly the ship out of port uh, and off away from the planet in the general direction of Cusk uh, because a little bit here or there doesn't really make a difference on the jump. Um, so you head out from the planet and you can see the beautiful blue seas beneath you moving away uh, and Far Harbour itself. There's a few ships moving in and out and around. There's some little maintenance Type things around the hull, moving around. around. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely have to hack one of those. Liberal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liberal. yeah. That's your people. Yeah. <laughs> they liberate from your own people. No, no, That's no. no. From someone else. From someone else. Yeah. 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 One yeah. of those like uh, mail nets. Well, <laughs> you're an independent citizen now, aren't you? You could. Oh, yes. No. <laughs> that, that would be unseemly. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, we'll go, we'll go liberate one from the combine. <laughs> okay. Right, so. Yeah, eighteen hours. What would you like to do for eighteen hours? Are you just gonna cruise, check the ship, uh, make sure everyone's in their quarters, make sure the cargo's battened down, all that kind of thing. Yeah, do all the normal ship checks. I will go and uh, have a quick word with all our passengers. Mm-hmm. As a as seemingly of a captain to do, you know, the welcome yes, aboard. Indeed. Yeah, and then show take them on a little tour of the public areas of the ship, show mm-hmm. them where the entertainment is, as we have a, a high fidelity music system, so very fancy music. <laughs> excellent, so it's got Jim Cousin. Our holographic, <laughs> our holographic play table. Hey, so, excellent. So, Let me trim it. That would be quite difficult, I don't think that would be very good. <laughs> show them, for example, where our medical room is, just on the off chance that they do hurt themselves. Yes. Okay. Um, if you need any help, obviously it's not my first love, but I do train in medicine and I was doing scouting work, so oh, yeah, you know, if you need any extra help. I'll also be surreptitiously trying to get a decent enough look at the Chobricks to work out if it's the one only on mail that comes. I'm not wearing a logo, if you're no, not, not wearing, not wearing a logo, it's harder, so I'll be trying to get a decent enough look at the Chobricks to work out if I know them. It will pick you up at some point, so okay. yeah. make an investigate... Uh, oh, uh, intellect roll. So oh, I have investigated zero and Captain will want to let Captain will want to be addressed. Come on. Yes, what's your right. modifier for Which that? Which is a plus two, I've got. So this okay. is sort of, like I say, everything I say, I sort of so talking about Rick's sort of two dice. Yeah, two dice. Yeah. And two. And it comes out of translators sort of hanging on oh. the of my shell here. Fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do recognise <laughs> Stalwart House. Right. I shall try and nap and say hello. So what role did you want from me? Because I should probably put my console in my native language. 
move the chair and that sort of thing. And um, we've probably had this discussion before we were. <laughs> oh, I just yeah. want to make sure you want to be on the sensors. Yes. Excellent. That's what I spend my time doing then, right? I shall convert it to a proper show rig station. Um, when I'm okay. going around doing all the cap <laughs> smash up, I will be doing it. Yes, all the leads that's happening. I shall wander <laughs> around making notes so on, on who is who. I have yeah. moments when I'm not talking to people, I'm explaining to Brandon why or I'm Parsons. Or Parsons. Yes. Parsons. Yeah. why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yes. Okay. So I can learn. Ah, okay. Learn. You're learning the finer arts of the finer arts of stewardship. I am leadership. learning the finer arts. I know about stewardship, just not the finer parts. Okay. Okay. Which is why I'm writing it down. Okay. <laughs> cool. So you're giving up. Remember their names. Them later. Them right. Yeah. Showing them this is yeah. what you, this is what you're supposed to do. It's okay, so you need cool. to do this. Mm -hmm. So if you remember, there was a young noble called Strelge, also yes. on the slumming it, who was seemed to be slumming it. Yeah. As far as he seems to be quite aloof and sort of dismissive when it, when you're taking him on the guided tour. With Parsons, you can see these like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, no, no. Oh, here, isn't oh, holographic table, great. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give each of the passengers a security pass, which allows them to go around the ship. It has actually no purpose at all, apart from the fact that it has a small transponder in it, which means I'll know exactly where they are, their entire journey. Okay, so you've got tracking devices you're going to pass around? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. Right. Um, Graf is very... Um, He's very appreciative of your time uh, and was, wants to talk to you about, well, what, what sensor equipment do you have on this ship? Um, I understand that uh, you know, these fire traders are fairly well kitted out. They are, I can assure you our sensors are more than adequate for what we need them for. Oh, very, well, very well. And you have um, Eddie Glisser on, on board. Are you on the tour as well or are you seeing to your room? Um, it depends whether he wanted to take us as a group or whether he wanted to take people around in Um Lily Clister, I understand, is very quite so very high in social standing. Yes. You would probably get your own tour. Oh right then. <laughs> Grief is also a solo high class passenger, so he might as well. Yeah. He's he probably got his own, own tour. Oh yeah, they will yeah, get yeah, their own. Yeah, so while you're showing him around, he's kind of you know, you're showing him the engine room and he's not that interested in the engines. But well, it's more showing him around the common areas, not the technical things. Okay, because they're quite right. sensitive, and then so you're up on the, the upper deck, you're yeah, showing the communal area. The communal areas. Um, yes, Glissa uh, uh, is uh, on board, I believe. She is. Um, do you know what, of her travels and her? I've heard lots of stories about where she's been, and some of the things she's seen. But I know some. I have, I have met her once before. Ah, this is under much more pleasant circumstances. Last time was a rescue. Oh, that sounds very interesting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you said, ah, you can come uh, talk to me about very it well. Anymore. Okay, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm to tend to my room and get the, the humidity levels set just right. If the lady wishes to discuss it with you, I'm sure she will. Very well, very well. I shall. Um, if you could arrange for um, an introduction, perhaps, that might be more appropriate. Of course, I'll, let, I'll speak to her. Thank well. you, thank you. She's in no way trying to wait for the show ricks from his bit. Because he's in the bit I can't get in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What's everybody else doing? I'm going to run a test on the turret. Because I figure it's a fairly new turret, isn't it? We want to make sure that it works. So it's a bit of a shake It's a very new vessel. Yeah. Okay. Bit of a shakedown test on the, the new turret, make sure it doesn't come flying off the ship. Okay, let's have a. Uh, so you're trying to figure out if all the systems work, that kind of thing? Yeah. So we'll have a gun and education roll. Because you're like checking it against the textbook. Should it operate like this? Should it not? <laughs> the giant dice. That one's cop dice. Double, <laughs> Double sixes. So we've had two twelves. So, so that's a critical, another critical success. Um, it seems to have been installed um, very well. Um, you find a small um, drift in one of the targeting scanners, um, and you correct it. Um, but yes, it all seems to be good. It's um, you know they're pulse lasers, so they're not top <coughs> line gear, but it's what could be uh, you know, installed at Korea. Works, shoot stuff. Mm -hmm. Cool. Shan, what's uh, what's Jackson up to? Um, 
And Jackson's probably um, found his way to the engineering room mm -hmm. and he's probably holed up in there reading a book. Okay. Keeping an eye on the systems. Yeah. Just, just, okay. Uh, just the power levels are, are fluctuating within normal parameters. Yeah, so just, just to keep, keep an eye. eye. You know, I probably glance up from time to time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Happy just to, yeah. Cool. Okay, so, and 18 hours sort of passed, you arrange for a meeting. Yeah, I do. But he's uh, taking a rest until tomorrow, and he's enjoying his hu the humidity of his chamber. As regal are amphibious, they often enjoy a slightly more um, humid atmosphere. Um, some of them even go to the extent of wearing clothes that sort of exude moisture onto them, spray them with moisture and sort of a misting effect. Um, but it can be slightly uncomfortable for non redol around them, so they don't sort of do it outside of redol, you know, only sort of um, company. So you manage to get to your jump point relatively easy. You've done your checks, you've checked the weapon, you've checked the engines, everything's lined up. We just need an astrogation roll. And let me just check the uh, jump travel. Here we go. Astrogation. The jump needs to be plotted. This is an easy four plus astrogation check. Education. Oh, so I so I got ten. Okay, excellent. Uh, Please, modified by the modified by the jump distance. So minus one. So nine. Okay. Okay. So you're successful. Um, my computer gives me plus one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And my education gives me plus one. Okay. So it can be done in advance. Oh, um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, plus that stuff. Sorry. I forgot to add my education. So that's <laughs> eleven. Okay, <laughs> right. You've done yeah, you're like yeah, I've been so, you've yeah, been studying yeah, the star yeah. charts for a while because you know this mission's been coming up. Yeah. So you've like, yeah, okay, I've yeah. already saved this file. Here we go, blah blah blah. Pop that in. Yeah. So that's all plotted and ready to go. So you're ready to um, go into jump travel. You divert power from your other systems, from your end drive, and you don't need those at the moment. Um, you the sound system goes down momentarily. Yeah, uh, and there's you feel a thrum of the jump drive within the ship, and you uh, go into jump travel. Uh, let's have a look. Just need the jump roll. Yes. Jump. Firing the jump drive requires an easy 4 plus engineer J drive check, which would be Jackson, who's in the engineering room, who leans over and goes, Oh! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, flash, 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 flash. You yeah, have 10 well, seconds. Well, well, actually, it takes, it takes you 20 minutes, but yeah. you've been monitoring things. It's still one yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> so <laughs> now. You should have written exactly 20 minutes, otherwise it goes wrong. We so, should probably cut it there so that we don't have to sit through the whole 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Roll uh, 20 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> oh, that's cool. It's modified by the effects of the original investigation oh, oh, oh. roll as well, which is. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. So I just want to see if he rolls four of us. Yeah, flat surface. You've got one. Yeah, and one. And. Roll the other one. Roll the other one. Just tempt me. Dice roll. <laughs> you got a double one. Oh, double one. <laughs> Modified okay. by the effect of well, your astrogation engineering. Okay, so the effect of my roll was. Uh, you rolled a 13. Uh, yes. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So 10, 13? Yeah. Well, well, it's 13 minus oh, 2, so we're 11. So you have so 11. 7. Yes. And what's your engineering? 1. And your education? 9. No, the modifier oh, of yeah. education. That's one. 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 1. 1. So you get plus 2, plus 7. Yeah. So 11. 11. But you rolled a double 1. Yeah. Which should be a critical failure. However, we're not going to have a critical failure on your first jump. <laughs> <laughs> so the effect of the astrogation was so good that it, you, you, you really successfully <laughs> pressed the wrong button. I was going to say, you classically missed yeah, the first yeah. jump. Yeah, it's a really good one. Yeah, it was a really good one. Yeah, it was a really good one. Oh, yeah. If anyone was watching, you'd have to fucking bump it. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh
You nearly kill everyone <laughs> in your first like, roll. Yeah. Well done. Cool. Kind of like Roots. So, season two. <laughs> we come out of Jack's <laughs> face. Uh-huh. 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 Wait, wait, wait. It's funny with the same. Okay, cool. Yeah, you don't want to miss jump. Okay. So, you go into... Oh, the other one's You're going to jump drive. Both cops are in um, da, 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 da. It creates a bubble of hyperspace by means of injecting high energy exotic particles into an artificial singularity. Wow, that sounds cool. Uh, the singularity is driven out of our universe, creating a tiny parallel universe, which is then blown up like a balloon by injecting hydrogen into it. The jump bubble is folded around the ship. So you have this strange sensation as the jump bubble folds around the ship of slight dizziness almost, your inner ear going off slightly, um, and then boom, you're in jump space, and there's, you can't really see anything outside of the window, it's just a kind of smudgy, blurry, bluey colour. Um, okay, and you're in jump space for someone roll 16. One. Six. I'm oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So 16, and 16, so 19, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, Seven days and six hours, I think? It's something like that. Oh, no, sorry, seven. Then, sorry, seven hours. Mm-hmm. So you guys are in... Uh, wow. Jump... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Did that in your head. <laughs> uh, seven so days and... It's four. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Five. There's <laughs> so five on the screen. Everything else is four. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you guys are in uh, jump for seven days. Um, so is there anything particularly you want to do? There is generally sort of six to eight hours of duty to be done, watch to be done, keeping an eye on passengers, keeping an eye on cargo, making sure systems don't fail. You know, making sure the engine's running smoothly. So there's stuff for everyone to be doing every day. There's meals to prep. There's things to tidy up. So generally, you have like working days of stuff to do if you work on the ship. Um, and then it's kind of, what do you want to do around that? Do you want to start? You can start learning a skill. You can start cross training. You can start reading books. You can, as in. You can buy a textbook or something that teaches you, you know, an instructional video, that kind of thing. Um, or you can start researching the destination uh, or talk to the passengers, whatever you want to do. But Glissa, Grafe, on the first day in jump travel, um, has an appointment to meet with you in the open common area, so as not to be improper. Uh, and he meets with you... Um, He's actually waiting for you, looking quite excited, and he's got a small uh, computer with him on on the table. Um, ah, and he, he sort of stands up, and gives you sort of hello. Have I have I heard of him at all? Uh, n- 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 no, no, no. no. He's just a scientist. He's just, just you know. I literally have my no idea what he does, but that's fine. No. Oh yes, uh, the captain mentioned you wished to meet me. You have a moment. Yes, thank you for thank you for meeting me. No, 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 it's great. Uh, okay, we've got nothing else to do for a week, have we? So you guys all talk to each other. That, that is that is very true. That is very true. I, I I'm I'm very interested in meeting you. I've 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 heard a lot about you um, while we're on the station. Um, Hopefully, some of it good. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and and sort of your journeys and your. Exploration, yes. your no, years in academia, and I'm, I'm just interested in maybe talking with you for a while. He sort of seems to be sliding his laptop across in front of him, as if he's about to make notes on okay. your conversation. Um, 
Do you mind if I? No, not at all. Take a few notes. No. Um, and he starts to. He, I mean, he generally talks to you a bit. He starts talking to you about his own research. He's looking into um, atmospheric conditions, and he's made a lot of um, point of studying Cusk, um, and he's just heading. He's headed back to Korea for a period of time to visit with family, etc. And now he's going back to do more study. Um, to to see if there's a way he can figure out what's happened on the planet with the environment, because they think there's some kind of exaggerated greenhouse effect that may have happened. Uh, well, if he doesn't mind, I should try and take some notes on the atmosphere of Cusk, Cusk, because that might be quite useful at some sure, point as well. Sure. As to exactly how toxic and screwed up it is. You know that you need um, a filter, definitely, mm. to go there, and that when sometimes when there are strong storms, um, there can be sort of Acid rain and yeah, that kind of thing. So important. you've got to watch out for storms mainly on Cusk. You can walk around fairly lightly protected. Otherwise, um, he recommends good footwear, um, and if you can, some sort of ground vehicle with a thick tread on the tyres. Ground vehicles can be a little bit unreliable sometimes because of the powerful winds, um, unless they're um, advanced. Graph units. Um, some of the cheaper ones we had uh, from Bryce Corp, we found that they um, didn't really work. Yeah, they weren't really up to it. Well, they're that mad. Hmm. Um, he seems to be trying to get information out of you about remnant technology that you've right. found in the past and anything that you may uh, find interesting. Um, your previous sort of finds, you've often been under non-disclosure agreements and yes. secrecy conditions and that kind of thing. Um, so it's up to you whether you want to share some... Um, I'll talk to them about what I think I can talk about. So mm -hmm. probably the incident where Roger had to rescue me the first time around with the uh, weird gravimetric signature and then... And where was that? A sudden lack of atmospheric condition. That was sh Shroud. Shroud? I think. We went for Shroud you can't quite the see it, yeah, but it's just... Just I think we thought that sounded nice and ominous, so we went for Shroud. Yes. So I'll tell them a little bit about that, but I will yes. also say that fascinating place was Melzac Tar. Oh, because, yes. You know, no one's ever successfully got a non disclosure agreement to exist on Melzac Tar. No, no, no. So I'll talk about that, and I will also say that I've, I've, I've sent whatever. Do we have the equivalent of like text that intergroup into? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, yeah. I will. I've it's sent it. all a WhatsApp group. I will send. <laughs> I will send some messages to what us to who would like to meet at some point. And I should explain that um, the Chorix um, that's that's in the crew, I think, is uh, was based there for a while. Ooh. So I'd really like to talk to him about excellent, it as well. Excellent. I have to. I have to catch up with him at some point. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, it's a it's a marvel. I've heard. I've seen. Uh, you know, obviously imagery and data files about the Citadel ship. But I've never been. I do want to go. Unfortunately, my research at the moment means I'm quite tired yes, to my... Cusco. I don't really get much time. At the time, they didn't go as well as it could have gone, but much better than had it have not gone, the show I had been there. It's like, it's Sounds a very like complex trouble, environment. Right? Yes, I do. It's a very complex environment, and the area I landed in was full of religious fanatics who may or may not be sacrificing people to the ship. Um, okay. Interesting. It takes all sorts to make a universe. Uh, definitely, definitely. Yes, you've quite a varied um, species crew. But, uh, apparently. Yes, maybe. which is... I saw um, your journal on him. Yes, yes, you don't see many of those, no, do you? Yeah, not one with blue hair anyway, I'm sure I remember. Mm. <laughs> yes. It's a disguise. <laughs> I do it. No, so yeah, it's what? <laughs> but no, and as I said, the captain, yes, is a you know, well, obviously extremely decorated war hero, but very competent man. Actually. Oh, I've heard. Um, yes, yeah, I know, I know, I know a bit about him. Who, I mean, who, who on Korea doesn't? Uh, you know, Commander Alexanderson is, you know. See, I've been telling people I knew years ago, and no one believed me. What? Oh, really? Okay. Let's say he rescued me from another. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, I've been talking about nine years ago, no one believes me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. You, know, you kind of idly yeah, chat. Yeah, I idly well. chat. Um, yeah, I suppose I'm a little bit concerned if he's trying to heavily pry into anything that I know has got a non disclosure on it, but other than that, I'm not that fast. He doesn't push too hard. He's very curious. 
But he doesn't, you know, when you start saying things about legalities, he sort of, like, oh, of course I understand. Why. All right. Okay. Then I shall and he maybe tries one more question. You know, maybe. No, no. Okay. Um, cool. Okay, so that's on the first day. And you guys are doing your duties, looking after the ship. Is there anything anyone particularly wants to do across the week? Yeah, I'm going to start training in the broker skill. Okay. Because I'm horribly, horribly poor. And learning how to make money is probably a good plan. <laughs> do you want someone in the crew to teach you that? Or are you going to train on your own with the ship's computer kind of thing? I was going to train on my own at first. Is it easier to train if I get someone to teach it to me? Um, that's a very good question. Yeah. What's your streetwise? My streetwise is... Well, as you use streetwise, instead of broker, to buy things... That is true. Then uh, your streetwise is probably better. That's kind of on a day-by-day day kind of thing, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas broker is like, I can put up a portfolio and make some cash, make mm-hmm. some real money. Yeah, we're going to do something about that social standing. Ah, <laughs> right. You're fed up with your lot as it is, are you? Yeah. And you're trying to make... Trying to better yourself. No, I'm just trying to be rich okay. as well as brilliant. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, right. Money for the cause. It's all for the cause. Like the power. Skills and training. All of them. Okay, so you're training in broker. So it, takes, so it takes eight weeks. It does take eight weeks. But I'm just curious whether someone's going to help or... The, from just on your own. Well, the first week I'll start off on my own. Okay, and you're in the common room as well, so you're sort of sitting in the common room watching yeah. these videos. Or yeah. this is <laughs> on, on YouTube, looking at videos of how to be a broker, top five facts of being a broker, <laughs> top ten tips of being a broker. <laughs> yeah, once, once I vaguely know what I'm starting to talk about, then I might start talking to someone who already knows how to do it. There's a, seem to be a lot of videos from a company known as Mantrax. Yeah, they would be. Um, who are very up for giving out information yeah. about how to trade. Yeah. There's lots of ads in yeah, them. Yeah, funny that. So, Mantrax, you say. Yes. Sounds like a fascinating organisation. It's <laughs> yeah. utterly trustworthy. Uh, they, they are based outside of the Ladaris subsector, but they're a large uh, mega corporation within... I am was familiar with Mantrax. Mantrax. Yes. Yeah, aren't they part of that repressive regime that you fought against? Not directly. <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> okay. Well, they deliver a lot this I'll be asking yeah. Jackson to give me some pointers on how to use my undersung grenade launcher. So, heavy weapons. Okay. In the cargo bay? Or. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, well, not obviously firing <laughs> grenades. Yeah, yeah. yeah beanbag rounds. I don't know how to fire them. We'll have to do something. Yeah, we'll yeah. have to, like, cop cordon off a couple of well, tons worth of cargo. We've got a full graphic. We've got a table. I've got a okay. personal okay. heads up display or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, show Virtual reality computer, so we can probably link the two. Do you have an intelligent weapon add on that would link your gun to your headset? No, but it would let me see things. Yes, it would let you see things, yes. So we can have a. Uh, let's have a look. Let's get the skill list out, see if we can set something up. So you can ask for holographic targets on your hand. Have you got anyone got any kind of electronics skills that might be. Yep, yeah, I've got two computers. Um, yeah, I've got yeah. two and one. I've got computers. Two. I've got computers, computers or comms if I can help Intellect, you because you don't know how to do this so far, you've never done it before, but you're trying something new. I didn't specify it, well, I was supposed to specify what the two and one is. Ooh, no, uh, that's quite good. Um, um, well, yeah, which one's computers and which plus, one's in, um, in this way, plus your three. game drive? Your uh, it's 13? No, engineer's change drive. Oh, okay. 13. So, yeah, you just have to decide which one. Okay. Oh, right. You hook up a very rudimentary um, program for your heads up display to start to figure out trajectories, um, and you can start to train for a week on heavy weapons. I think heavy weapons. Heavy weapons. He has a... Under, 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 under yes. Okay, so you, you're now starting to train. So basically, put down the skill that you're training in, and you've got one out of eight weeks yeah. down. Yeah. I, can, I can give you some of my, uh, my old combat videos, which we use for training for my... Um, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Space Mariner. Oh, 
I am Space Mariner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Galactic. Galactic Mariner. Galactic Mariner. Sorry, I'm I'm just in space. I do lots of space. <laughs> 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 I do better. I, I do space I do other people's space. Not my space. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's gone. Yeah. <laughs> you can overlay your things into, into more real life situations with proper people shooting at you. <laughs> well, so well, Magnus is kind of running around the cargo bay going, ah! ah! <laughs> <laughs> um, while I'm doing my um, running with the ship things, I'm taking. Parsons around with me, or Parsons, to show him what I'm doing. Okay. So I, you could say that I'm teaching you stewardship. Okay. So you're going to learn a week of I stewardship. Am. And I've got, a com- I've got a computer program to help me learn more you know, stewardship. Okay. Does advancing skills you've already got work in the same fashion? It just takes it a while. two weeks. Yeah. So, right. Well, I should be doing more reading. Mm. Okay. Cool. Um, but during the week, um, I'll be running um, uh, combat simulations uh, on anti-boarding actions. Um, okay. I shall run some routines on locking off uh, certain doors and setting up cargo in certain ways and making sure that the crew and, and the passengers know mm-hmm. how to travel through them. Okay. It means that any boarders who know what a far trader is like inside will be slowed in their process, progress to get into key areas okay. of the ship. Make a uh, <laughs> take a tactics and intellect roll. See how well you prepare your scenarios. Let's be wearing your super two your bonus tactics. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> that's really bad. Yeah. I'm have to try that again. So yeah, I got I, 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 they, well they're the dice that I've been given. <laughs> uh, I'm going to stick with them all, get all the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. So so I get a plus, I get a plus three. Okay. Okay. So you've got six. Got six. Okay. Do you manage to intellect as well? Make a... Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, intellect. Uh, no, your education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's intellect. Because it's more of a creative... Okay. Yeah. I know you've done this before. This is like a textbook kind of thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it would yeah. be education. Yeah. So it would be education. Okay. So in which case it would be seven then. Okay. Right. Yeah. So you set up some very good scenarios. I mean, you don't have quite all the right stuff. Yeah. You know, you don't have quite the right people. Make yeah. a leadership and um, intellect role. See how well you coordinate the passengers in your in your scenarios. Yeah. Because you've got a very good setup. That's, they, that's, they just that's don't want to partake. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Okay. Yeah. So, so, you got so, so I shall I shall do the minus two because I don't have leadership. Is it minus three? Minus three. I'll do the that's minus three because I don't have leadership. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that gives me seven. Okay, so you've got seven on your tactics. Oh, sorry, you've got seven. No, it's not. Yeah. not no. yeah, so you've got seven on both. Okay. Um, consistent. Yeah, so it's not, um, yeah. you know, most of the passengers engage in it. Yeah. Some of them are like, oh, I'm tired, or they just kind of, oh, yeah. no, I'm okay, thank you, but thank you. <laughs> I will definitely I'll engage. Uh, I, shall, I will give all of the, I'll, I will give all the other crew members um, a, a, a transponder. But I will tell them that they're getting one, um, and basically you can keep this, and, and if and that means I'll know where you are, and, and if you need me to come and rescue you from anywhere, then I, then I can. <laughs> I assume you bought transponders. I have like two hundred. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> signal of the ones you're handing out because I've got a heads up display. Yes. Yes. So I can track people as well. Yes. Okay. If they help Simon, cool. I will be very attentive to all of your drills about what we do if we're boarded and what we do if the decompresses and it's not because this has happened so many times. Essentially, you just, you, just, you just stay out of the way and, yep. and, and then and okay. <laughs> let, let people who know I'll what you're doing. I'll stick it underneath my If it helps Simon, I'm right. always in the turret, even when I'm not actually in the turret. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> so on these training drills. Well, the point of actually telling you that this is what it is, would we is so you can completely go and pair of You know, unlike a CEO of us, force of habit. Uh, this shield is big enough that it can hide a person holder <laughs> and one other person. Others, oh, so they're quite big. They are quite big. Okay. Uh, there'd be a bit of a gap between. Alright. So. Yeah. Maybe three boarding shields would bridge the whole thing. I may have another board one, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> How much were there? You are a boarding yeah, shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, so we've got three, so we can okay, fill, so you can, like, fill a corridor. Yeah. And like I said, I suspect there are only Trorix wide. <laughs> Two humans, <laughs> one Trorix. <Yeah. laughs> 
Yeah. Well, either way, we can basically wall off a corridor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we've got training going on. You've got reading. Sorry, you were going to say. We still have found time to sit down and catch up. To yes, but first of all, we've got to ask the commander. So, commander, is the commander Magnus? Is there anything that you think the ship is lacking in on our ship? I don't know, you know, small part of it, but uh, careful on the thing is rocking. There. Sorry. Um, in terms of equipment? No, no. Um, in, I've trained basically in many different things, but I just wonder if there's any. Areas you like back up in, uh, any, any, any gaps in, 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 in the skill set of the crew? Well, more engineering is always helpful when you're on board a ship, mm. as well as more mechanics. You can never have enough engineers and mechanics when you're on a spaceship. I've always been interested in more complicated uh, in the engineering, so yeah. I should study this. Um, past Everything he's saying comes through a translator. Yeah. yeah. And so there's the background yeah. noise of the chariot. Perhaps uh, life support would be a good specialisation. Oh, well, uh, I'd only learn the basics at this point, but yes. Yeah. And that could be a goal for the future. Cool. So you're training for a week in engineering. engineering. Cool. Okay. Yes, I say I want to catch up the store at some point, but other than that, I'm reading. Sure. More linguistics books. Yes, well, you can catch up with me. Yeah. Good, sir. I'm glad you've. I thought it was you who had to double check. I assume it's you. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Listen, uh, is it cool or are you just related to them? I forget. Do you take the surnames like humans? He's I don't not remember. not really that way inclined. <laughs> and I'm not, even if he was. Let's um, just listen. Well, it's good to see you, English. So how have you been? Uh, uh, better than when you last saw me, let's put it that way. So I haven't exploded or been kidnapped by religious fanatics for, like, nearly four years at this point, so... Good, glad to hear it. I didn't you know I went back home and worked for Father for a bit, so I've kind of had it with Regal, the Kingdom, everyone related to... Yeah, all of that. I like to visit so, the Kingdom. It's, it's supposed to have an interesting angle on civilization. You really wouldn't. It's really humid. And Sherwicks are not really creatures of humidity, are you? It doesn't really bother us too much. It's very humid and it smells bad and you wouldn't like it. Not good, I'm a better. But yes, I'm happy being out with Queer about that new career there. It's better. So we take the leisure mission on. Oh, Remnant That's... Tech, as per always with me. Um, I think there's subterranean remnant areas. Um, it looks like it was multiple small uh, settlements, and we think there might be some sort of transit system. Um, that's what the initial scans look like, but they really need someone that's a remnant specialist to look. Hmm. But great, the other scientist, um, uh, he's a, I think he's atmospherics sort of scientist originally. Um, he's been there working on it. I think there's some sort of massively exaggerated greenhouse effect that, you know, the environment wasn't naturally like that. On cuts. On cuts, something went wrong and now it's like that. Um, so that is in itself quite interesting because it could be that it was actually abandoned before the fall of the uh, ancient societies or something like that happened. Um, so, you know, it might even be a, a middle stage in their development that we don't know a lot about. It could be very interesting. And obviously, you don't know what sort of remnant tech. I mean, you know, no, Tara. I was going to say, do you know? And if specialist was... in, oh, uh, tend to specialise in union tech, but I don't know. I don't think they know yet. Hmm. I would have really seen it. Um, but I bought <laughs> a lot of environmental stuff with this. I think we might be going to need it. Do you think it likely to be? Would this be in line with uh, the same people that built the Citadel? Yes. I don't know yet. Until I see it, I'm looking at the anyway. I assume I don't know. You don't know. Until I see it, I don't know. It could be the people that built the Citadel ships, could be one of the other races, I'm just not sure. Um, but that's why I need to get eyes on it as soon as possible because. <laughs> and this is a secret mission for Crit, uh, I assume, trying to restrict the information on this. I don't think they want um, a lot of people descending on it suddenly. Um, I don't think they're going to be able to hide that there is some what looks like previous habitation scans there for it. But no, I'm not supposed to be reporting any findings widely, which I know is unfortunate given your own talents. But oh no, I've retired from. Oh, you're not reporting on that. That makes life a little bit. I still want to find things out, but I, I 
don't think I'll share it. You don't necessarily need to broadcast it. My hyper said that they don't need me to share it with anyone anymore. Oh, so right. That went. <laughs> Marvellous. You can, well, you can come and help then. I might write um, a, a memoir. That's a, that, that, that could be a different thing. Mm. So, what, in fact, I think you can, I might need to help carrying it as much as anything. Um, I mean, Quirrell were very good after the accident that you helped mm-hmm. rescue me. Well, I'm not as uh, young uh, as I was, but... <laughs> no, but you're still considerably stronger than I um, Otherwise, I'll be pulling along with little wheels, and that kind of doesn't... <laughs> it doesn't seem very good for my sort of, you know, scientific credentials. Are you suspicious of this grave? Mm, not at is the moment. He... He's nosy, but he's not... Is he old critter, or is he... So. I think so, yeah. He's, he's nosy, but he's not intrusively so. Some people are just naturally nosy. Yes. Terrible, isn't it? Not really. Um, so far, no. So far, I've not got... He's not bringing any warning bells. He does, I'll let you on, Captain. That's good. No, it's a pleasure to meet you again, though, actually. Yes, I'm with you, things. I know, but as I say, if you fancy a chat or anything, I'd love to hear what was happening on that tile last time we were there, so... Mm-hmm. Do you come and... Share many stories down Holland. Oh, marvellous. If you get any time, do you come up and have a chat? I'm only sitting reading them. They have a table here, I believe. Oh, yes, they did a table. The second assistant, I'm not investigating deeply yet, but yes. Huh. We could do that, couldn't we? Cool. Okay. So you guys uh, catch up, uh, and the rest of you carry on um, getting on with maintenance duties. The bots are cleaning the ship. Um, and every now and then, you're going around and making sure that the crew, the passengers are okay, they're all being tended to, all their things are working, they've got food and tap, light. Tap on the, uh, the cryogenics, tink, 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 tink. Uh, yeah, you've, you've, got got few, you've got a few, uh, yeah, you rub on the ice, <laughs> you know. Their food is, oh, yeah, yeah. Their food is excellent, <laughs> courtesy of the, auto, the gourmet auto-chef. Gourmet auto-chef. That's just a great expense. <laughs> Okay, so you don't have to cook. <laughs> oh, so they, they always have an excellent meal. <laughs> you don't have to cook. Yeah. I'll put some, I'll put some tape on the switch that turns off the cryogenics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So put the tape on it. Yeah. No, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do not. Jackson, do not touch. <laughs> <laughs> this does not make the jump drive work. Cool. Okay, 20 minutes. <laughs> Just doing that almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe just take the button off of that one. Because the, the aesthetic of the ship is very aliens rather than Star Trek. So it's more sort of slightly darker, more switches and lights and that kind of thing. It's imagine a sci fi made in the 80s, late 70s, early 80s rather than now. So it's kind of, you know, all that kind of aesthetic. So there's switches, there's dials, there's, but there's still computer readouts and all that kind of stuff and holograms, but it's a bit more, a bit more like that. I imagine like a recent Blade Runner film that had like really futuristic tech that was all from the original. I haven't seen that. I imagine it's more brightly lit though. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. It's not a horror movie. <laughs> so yes, it is slightly better lit. So yeah. you can see what's going on. And it's, the face and it is immaculately clean. It's very clean. Yes. <laughs> so dripping water rooms. Obviously. Okay. So unless anyone has any other activities they want to do. If you do want it to have more of a horror movie vibe, I am happy to just drop out of ducks for the long run. <laughs> 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 I could put one on the ceiling. <laughs> Do you actually have a long bow? Yes. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> so stick it in the space of the gun turret. I wonder how that fits the gun turret. It's in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's only in there. It's, it's a like triple gun turret. There's a bit of space in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When the turret runs out, I'll just I open the front and <laughs> shoot arrows. Cool, okay. So the week passes and. You start to approach the end of your jump, and you start to get everyone ready for manoeuvring back to regular drive and thrust, and you jump, fall out of jump space into the cusk system, and you can see the star uh, ahead, and on your sensors, manned by Star Husk, indeed, uh, you can see the world of cusk uh, distant. Uh, about 100 diameters of cusk away. Good. Uh, and you uh, can pick up the 
transponder of the space station Stormhaven, which is um, sits in geosynchronous orbit of the planet uh, above the northern hemisphere, so it's um, you know moving on the planet. Okay, so you are back to normal thrust, and you head in towards uh, Gusk. Uh, and that's good. I'm just going to take it this way. It's another. I think I actually got Korea wrong. Um, so Korea should have been slightly longer. So it's about it's about sixteen hours to get to Cusk at one G, and we can go faster if you want to and push the drive um, to get there quicker. Um, yeah. But if your grav fail, you've got grav plating on the ship, so you're oh, fine nice. casually. Yeah, um, the remnant has been there for 2,000 years or whatever, it's not going to suddenly evaporate in the next We can, maybe 200,000 years, to look at trade on our way to the planet. So you can actually try and. Uh, you can start trying to communicate. There'll be a yeah, short you time can, delay. I'll bring out eBay. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, see what's you know, in the demand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Space, okay. Space Bay. Space Bay. Space Bay. Cusp Bay. Cusp Bay. I know what they're saying. So, yeah. the space communication space channels from oh, Cusp yeah. are few. So, yeah. it's not a very populated system. You know that there's a few thousand people here who are generally wholesale, either produce, trying to produce food and supplies yeah. with um, hydroponics on the station, or moving up and down to the surface and doing scientific research. So you you know ahead of time that there are representatives of bear with me one moment, my prep, uh, representatives of the scout service and the sciences uh, de uh, department. What about their mail department? Their mail department. You'll know that on the space station they'll be receiving mail. So the the logistics manager of the of the space station will. Talk to you about the mail when you arrive, take service of it and pass it on. Because that information, there's no communication between the stars unless it's taken by ships. So you are bringing fresh information that's just a week old from Korea to here. And if no one else has been here, travelled that in a while, then you're bringing valuable information. And of course, letting them know to start assembling all of their communiques back. Yes. Yep. yep. So you do get hail after a short time of your appearing in the system, the time delay for the message to reach you on the planet. Um, you get hail and a um, a read old female comes on the screen and she is wearing uh, the insignia of a departmental head. Uh, and she is a message uh, to the Aurora. Um, I am Sleshk, um, Sciences Departmental Head. I will meet you on Stormhaven at Docking Port 12. Uh, please be careful when docking with the station. We are still repairing key systems. Environmental systems throughout the station are in flux. Please behave yourselves uh, and I shall see you soon. I have attached a separate message for Glissa. If you could please pass that to her confidentially, it would be most appreciated. Um, Commander, um, your services will be needed beyond um, ferrying Glissa to the station, but I will talk to you when you arrive. I'll send back an acknowledgement, basically. Okay. Sure. Um, I will obviously pass the the sensitive communicate directly to Glitter mm -hmm. um, to inform her this was deemed confidential by the departmental head, so it's not been tampered with mm -hmm. for her ears only. Yep. You go you're gonna have a look at the information. Yes. There's a short message from Slash, who is the female redoll head sciences. Um and she basically tells you in a short message that within this package there's various scans and sensor readings that we'd like you to have a look at um, in confidence uh, and we'll meet you when you arrive. We are going to request the commander to use the ship to take you down to the surface to investigate 
that which you will see in the readings. Right, okay. I shall sit and look at readings. Okay. Uh, when it comes to docking, I will take my time longer than I normally would because of how unstable they said the docking is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got a while before you get there. So 16 hours before you get there. I assume the cargo would be unloaded at the space station as opposed to the plant. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. So you'll dock the cargo bay mm -hmm. onto the, the space station. Um, so the passengers are starting to get all their things ready. They know that obviously they're now in your space and you're heading to the space station. Um, they start to move around. Obviously, they've got a few things in the cargo hold um, dotted around, and you see a few passengers moving around, checking their things, uh, including Grafe and what's his name, Strelge, the uh, the aloof Vidal noble. Um, but everyone seems to be. Behaving themselves on board ship. Um, the robots are cleaning the decks, so everything's good. Um, you check through the data package, uh, and a, a variety of scans and sensor readings show you that um, near some small structures, which are massively corroded and worn down from the atmosphere, um, which have an underground series of tunnels connecting them, which they believe is where the old transit system was. There seems to be some kind of dome structure which is massively damaged, but it has some kind of central um, protected machinery that has a very low trace power signal. Right. Um, and from your... But it does still have one. It very, very faint. Almost um, sort of like, I don't know, a, a Casio calculator, you know, kind of. There's a few lithium batteries sitting somewhere, that kind of level. It's so low, uh, but that was the one thing after many sweeps of that area they picked up on this. The, the dome is mostly submerged, beneath various um, uh, rock flows, uh, what look like old, potentially lava flows, um, but there's some of the housing poking through the ground. Okay. This looks very interesting to you. Make a... You've got a history or something. Yes, which is a science. Yes, yeah, science, history. And education... No, intellect. They're the same modifiers. Okay, well, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> she cannot roll. I did not roll two sixes. Less than an eight. <laughs> but you got like one six and a four. You can borrow my dice. That's fine. Um, it's probably all right if she's rolling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 13, 15. Okay. So, Unless I've got any minuses, I don't know that. No. You know that all the reunion tech that you've found previously has been in space on an asteroid. You've rarely heard or seen of anything on a planet. You know that this group were largely um, migratory, and moving around on ships in space. So probably not union. But this strangely looks like union technology, you think. Being on a planet. Being on a planet. Right. Mm -hmm. I shall spend 16 hours staring at it from lots of different angles. Okay. You are able to kind of geo reference where that is on the planet as well, so you know where on the northern continent you're kind of headed to. Yeah. It's near uh, a mountain range that's kind of got a few dormant volcanoes in it. Um, and there seems to be low structures around there. Few scientific survey groups have gone there yet, like 10 years ago when the first people got here uh, from Korea. Uh, so it's largely untouched. Which is good. Um, and if I can, I'll start having a little think about how we're going to get in as well. Okay. So possible. Mm -hmm. Pulse laser. <laughs> 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 Blow a hole in it. No. Okay, so you're busy. Yes, you're heading thinking. the data, and you guys are heading towards the, the space. Are we going to restock fuel 
and supplies before we go any further. Yes. We're going to do that as soon as we get there. Yes. Okay. I should let the captain know that I think Shlesk is probably going to want to meet me not long after we get there. Are we not better off restocking um, on our way out? Well, it's going to organise it so they've got it all ready for us. That's true. Mm-hmm. So I will contact them. Tell them what we need. Okay, so you're going to arrange for provisions, refuelling, all of those things beforehand. Okay. Yeah. The logistic manager of the space station is happy to do that and start to top up the credits uh, that will be required. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, as you approach into um, Cusk, you can see that this is a... Um, uh, the space station is a rod through the middle with two wheels at either end. You can see those Ooh. rotating to generate gravity within the uh, circular parts of the space station. Um, and you can see the ships. There are two ships docked um, at one end. Uh, the central pillar is fairly thick. It's big enough for multiple docking points in the end. Uh, and you can see a, um, a scout ship and a some sort of trader vessel, a, a subsidised merchant vessel Ooh, docked on the cool. end. <laughs> um, you also pick up on your sensors uh, another ship off in the asteroid belt of the system. Just over there. So is it mining or doing anything at all? Um, it's, well, it seems to be sort of on its way to the asteroid belt. Oh, okay, so it's still yeah. traveling. Yeah. If you want to, you can try and scan these ships a bit better to see, or see if you can tell from the sensor readings what they are. Mm-hmm. Um, the ones at the space station will be slightly easier, so they will be a 6 plus. Uh, whereas the one towards the asteroid belt will be a 10 plus. Oh, well, we'll go. Um, I think that, does that do scanning help? Yes. Plus two, we've got yeah. minus two, so I think that cancels out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go for it. Roll the dice. Roll the dice. Is it in sector education? Um, it's education. So. Do we draw separate to the two at the station? Sure. Okay, so the first one was an eight. Okay, so that's one. about a ten actually. Um, and that's also that's a twelve. The second one, so. Okay. And this is the one I actually need. Shining before. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so you scan the easy ones. Not a six. Yeah. Uh, and you get things off their transponders. Mm-hmm. There's one ship that you can bring up on visual sensors, these ships. Um, it, it's a bit grainy though, because they're quite... Looking out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Take up your visual scanning. <laughs> out the window. You finished tapping on the computer, just got up and walked you, to the window. <laughs> you know, but, you know, but there's a ship. You zoom with your optical sensors. <laughs> Uh, and you can see a ship with the blue and green insignia of Bryce Corp. Ooh. Is that the subsidized merchant one? Yes, called the Radial. And the am scout I, ship... Am I able... Am I, this, is, is, is on this is on the ship systems now. Okay, yeah, that's what you're saying. So it's not on the ship. Unless you specifically say you're going to close yourself off from the other systems, then it's available to yeah. anyone. Uh, and the other ship is a CCDF, uh, Career Council... Defence Force, um, scout ship called the Arrowhead, and that has laser turrets. Mm-hmm. Um, have I ever served on the Arrowhead? Uh, were you in the scout service? Uh, no, but I was a Marine, so if you ever had troops on board a vessel, um, if you ever went on a mission, you wouldn't necessarily have a vessel. So you would be put on a vessel fleet. fleet. It depends how they advance through them. The rear fleet range. isn't very big. Roll two dice on an eight plus. You did. Oh, oh, was I didn't make it round? Oh my god! Uh, Why don't you roll well? Okay. Yes, you did, but a long time ago, so you're not sure who 
would be in charge of it. Yeah. Would, would I know who the commander is? That's a you would think the officer. commander of that ship is probably the new departmental head at the Cusk, who is known, whose name is Nelk. Um, for I mail. I will relay that. Mm-hmm. Do I? Do I have a? Do I know anything about? Well, I know the radio. radio. I know how to assault yeah, radio. I know how to defend it. Make a. Mm. Uh, Again, you're uh, somewhat still on these guys' side, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. You can have to defend. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Get to safe and punch to a hole. What mm-hmm. skills have you got that could see if you know <laughs> something about these people, this ship? What well, history has been working at the corporation for. Uh, investigate? Yeah, yeah investigate. I, I have investigated. Okay, maybe, and because you're part of the organisation, you would have seen lots of the uh, information before. Make an investigate education role. Uh, Seven. Seven. Yeah. Seven. Eight. Okay, eight. Good. Um, the radial is a ship that works on the. Uh, edges of the Ludaris combine. Okay. Um, but has re- you th- you seem to remember something about a transfer to under under a different regional manager. Oh, okay. Would that be of interest to me at all? In my it may explain why they're here rather okay. than in the combine area, which is happening. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, okay, so you've done a bit of scanning uh, mm-hmm. and you're heading towards the station. You've sent a head message to the logistics manager that you want to have. Uh, yeah, let's get things ready, fueling up and all that. I've given him my yeah. cargo manifest so he'll know exactly which order he will not have Okay, and mail's coming off first. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're very excited to get the, the mail drop, um, so that's really good. Uh, and as you get closer, to the station, you can see now that there are actually people in back suits on the exterior of the station, like fixing things, bolting things. There, you can see sort of gas trace gases escaping from some areas. There's construction, not robots, but sort of like little harness kits where they've got grappler arms. I think it's fairly rudimentary. They're really trying. Lots of people seem to be doing stuff to fix this space station. It looks absolutely battered. There's sort of holes, pop marks, burn marks all over it. But it seems to be rotating as you would expect. Uh, and it seems to be thrusting every now and then, even after a little outburst, and readjust to stay in kind of geosynchronous orbit. So it's, it seems to be working okay. Um, you think a couple of rounds from Pulse <laughs> might, might sort it out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you are welcomed by. Um, right, you get uh, conned again by the, the, the scientist departmental head, Slash. And she appears on the screen. And now that you're close to the station, she's, it's real time. Is she like the department head for science? In, in Cusk. Oh, right. That's going to say. <laughs> she's been promoted into a shit job. Uh, well, a kind of, you know, it's you're a important, new emerging... Not pretty good at your job. You're, you're important, but not as important as the people back on Korea. I was going to say, she's not like the science department head of all of Korea. No. Yeah. In terms of society, societal ranking, how would she compare to, say, a staff departmental head back on Korea? Similar level. Sim- 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 maybe just sort of below. Level. Maybe just below. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So she comes on the screen. Ah, her commander. It's a pleasure to meet you, but I'm not face to face quite yet. And you, um, I'm sure that will be soon. Yes. Um, now, I understand we've been sent your cargo manifest and everything seems to be in order. I assume the mail is intact. Of course. Excellent. Um, I believe funds will be transferred. Um, and your cargo will be unloaded when you arrive, which is excellent. And Glissa has received the information that we passed on. I would 
ask that your ship would be available for a small task uh, once you've unloaded your cargo. And um, Glissa, we, we really require Glissa to make her way down to the surface. And unfortunately, um, most of our ships are in action, heading back to Korea, or um, uh, we have a, we have a trader ship here, which is not really fit for atmospheric entry. Um, we need her to get fairly quickly down to the surface. We've given her details, um, which I'm sure she's reviewing. Um, but we need your assistance and a certain level of secrecy. Now I know I don't need to. Uh, ask that of uh, a, a man of your reputation and standing, uh, but I need a word that perhaps your crew and uh, you were, were, um, were quiet about what activities might be going on. We, we may be dealing with remnant technology. Of course, you can uh, rely on my crew. They are a, a fine bunch of fellows. Excellent, excellent. Great. Um, and, and we're willing to Two um, spies in a cop, man. <laughs> pay for your time. Uh, uh, we'll get you uh, uh, I believe we've got uh, an adversary of 10,000 credits that we can transfer to your, your account. Um, the Because we're on a career banking system here. Um, Although it's a slight delay, and obviously your mail service will update some of our financial records. Um, but we can transfer 10,000 credits to you for this service, for continuing your for shepherding sh Glitter down to the surface. Okay, uh, just for the day, just to shepherd her down and then... To bring her back would be... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how long she'll need. You may want to talk to her about that, depends on the information she's got. I'm... Fortunately, my expertise is in environmental sciences, so I really am um, uh, a storm freak. Let's put it that way. Uh, the time period may alter the cost if we were well, to be down there for days. If, yes, if it becomes extended, I'm sure we could, we could uh, look to perhaps uh, find you further. Very well. Thank you shortly after you dock. And then there is a buzz of activity as uh, station crew come in and start to help you unload and you guys are all there doing your bits and bobs, moving crates and things around. The logistics manager himself comes down. Um, he is a Fogolani by the name of Baran. What are the rules with regards to weapons and armour on Korea and Cusk? On Cusk? I'm assuming it's the same as Korea, but... Here, it's actually slightly different because it's a bit more um, of a dangerous environment and <clears throat> understand you might need to um, look, have some tools down on the surface. Uh, only sort of assault weapons, SMGs and some armors <coughs> and you're allowed to look after it for, for personal protection. When you say some armor... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's more level four, so it's not, not hugely, because it's kind of a uh, frontier. frontier. Um, so let's have a look. Uh, one battle dress is banned. Oh, okay. Two and combat is, armor is banned. Uh, three black armor is banned. Uh, four cloth armor is banned. Uh, five mesh armor is banned. So wait, wait, all of them is banned, is it? Yes. Yeah. No. Does that include the planet? No, this is the station. Really. Well. So they don't be walking around with yeah. big guns and armor on the so station because we, we look like a lot of trouble. Because no. the planet is, is less... Uh, the planet is not under yeah. the same Okay, so I can walk around quite happily wearing, well, a, a protect suit. Yes, but, but if you were to go into one of the scientific... You go into one of the scientific outposts on the planet because there are small places where there are groups of people doing studies. Then they would probably ask that you don't wear your combat armor <laughs> in yeah. the scientific station. But on the planet itself, they're not really worried. On the space station and civilized areas of Cusk, please don't carry light assault weapons and armor. 
So pistols. Please don't mind your body armor. Yeah, you can have your personal protection yeah. type thing. Pistols, stunners, you know, non-visible armor. So cloth armor. <laughs> no. Tech level 12 is non-visible. Is it? Yeah. Okay, cool. So there you go. But if they catch you with it, if they catch you with it, they might be annoyed. Mm-hmm. Right, so this is an environment suit, though. <laughs> okay, I'll wear my diplo vest and protect suit then. Okay, cool. Right, so um, you dock, your cargo bay is open, you are, they start to enter your cargo. Um, you're aware that the ship's docked. Uh, in yes, your room. I shall. Yeah, well, I can get to the captain's attention, I shall try and get there. I understand that docking things have to happen. Well, yeah, sort of after <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> click, 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 boop. Unload the ship. There you go. That's captain's duty stuff. <laughs> so you come to the bridge and uh, Magnus is there. Direction, it probably, probably would allow you escorted. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think Slash wants to meet with me. And the other thing I got from the uh, uh, recording she sent and some of the data is that um, I think they're going to ask you to take me down to the surface if they haven't already. They have already, indeed. Um, in which case, unless they have any issue with it, do you want to come with me to meet her? If they, I mean, if she throws you out the line, I can't stop her. But I think if you're coming down there, you should know what's down there. That would be appreciated. Um, it shouldn't be anything too complicated or dangerous. Do you know if there's any ruins or anything in the asteroid belt? It wasn't on any of the recordings if there was. Mm. But though that's kind of potentially an interesting side into what's going on. Mm. And you'll probably appreciate this isn't where you did for so long. Could be Union Tech on the planet. Is that unusual? Yeah, Union never sat on planets. They're a tinner. They were a tinner, aren't they? Mm. The asteroid belts, massive ships, now that tar. Um, but Union Tech on the planet is very old. But I think that's why they all made. There were extensive mines on the various asteroids in Merlin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's no. It's very rare to see it on a the planet. They weren't really that way inclined. So I suspect that's why they need me and why they need me urgently, because it could be really interesting. So you don't know why there'd be a ship heading towards the asteroid belt? Could be simply for mining, but. I'd have thought of mining. I'll ask them. I mean, well, the worst you can say is I'm not going to tell you what that is. But I can make a case that that's important to my uh, notes on the matter. Just because the Union were known for going to Asteroid. You receive a message to say that Slash has actually come to the ship and asking to be allowed onto your bridge. And show her in. Okay. So shortly after your conversation she arrives. She's um, sort of late 30s. um, Has got a a suit that's got a system in it that's vaporising around her. So she's vaping around her whole collar of her clothing. Um, and you can see the moisture on her skin um, and she seems to sort of come in a sort of slightly uncomfortably. Uh, thank you, Commander, for, for letting me on aboard the bridge. Um, hello, Glissa. Um, Very pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you and your crew. Um, thank you for bringing Glissa here. Um, she's a very important person to our mission here. I uh, think I can be of help. Well, I do too. As I said earlier, I'm really an environmental scientist um, and we have discovered some potential uh, remnant technology ruins on the planet that we would like Glissa to investigate and examine. Um, and we need you to take her down to the surface if that's possible. Of course. A uh, pre agreed uh, price? Yes, yes. Um, and obviously, as I said, we need a certain level of secrecy. Obviously, we're not going to keep the, uh, the secret for long. No. Um, but just an agreement that we won't be going around shouting about what we're finding. Of course. Excellent. I'll send you a small document for your crew to uh, affix their signature to. Can I just ask them a quick question just before we make our way down there? Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, as I say, I, I, I'm aware from the scans might be looking at an unusual situation. Is there any other evidence of any other remnant tech in the system, nothing in the asteroid belt? 
Oh, yeah. well, we have a, a laboratory ship headed out to the asteroid belt because we have picked up a few uh, densitometer readings that are interesting in the asteroid belt. We're not sure. We want to go and run some tests on some of the... Yes, if you do find anything at all unusual, even if you can't show me the exact composition, because I appreciate this issues of mining rights, mm -hmm. if you could at least tell me there is potentially something unusual there, that would be very helpful. Because context is very important, and uh, I'm a little uncertain how this is all going to fit together just yet. Right. We do think that a lot of the asteroids in the belt have been previously mined. They've been mined previously. Like, quite a while ago. Yeah. But we don't know how concurrent that is with what's down there, really, but like, I don't know, could be thousands of years there. there. There are artificial surfaces under recent impact craters that we can we have observed through optical sensors from the station, and now we're sending a laboratory ship out to have a look. Yes, if you could let me know, I'd be really appreciative because I think there's um, the, the two could be related to each other. I will see what I can do. Thank you. We're all under a contract here. Yeah. While they're doing that, yeah. can I go into the station and um, streetwise a little bit to mm -hmm. find out what the skinny is among the people who are working on the station, the sure. the workers, the okay. tradespeople, the the lower class, poorer class type people who are there. The guys who you're bringing out of the cold storage. Yeah, yeah. but the ones who are already there, the yeah, ones yeah, I brought out time, previously. Yeah. Okay. Did they all make it? I was going to say, we're going to roll sit there. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, you guys roll, and... Uh, oh, who's actually medicating them? Are you offering to do it? Or? Well... No, the station's well, doctor will come do it, oh, and they're fine. Come so to that's... people. Help <laughs> 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 a scientist. Yeah. 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 They're not stupid. Yeah. Yeah. We can't have any of these not cut out. We well, need workers. We can. They're low... Yeah. The, the low brief. The, 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 there's a sort of standard sign that they might die. Yeah, there's that's kind of two things I want to find out. One is what's the word on the street about what's going down on the planet, mm -hmm. and two is what's the word on the street on what sort of things people might need. Okay, cool. Um, so you head into the station uh, as they're having their meeting, and there are lots of workers around. There's the spark of kind of welding torches, there's the thud of bolt guns as they Puncher uh, plates onto the walls, not those kind of bulk hands. Uh, you know, there's people moving around in protective gear, welding masks, big gloves, and all that kind of stuff. You start to, your appearance seems to blend in fairly well. Make a street wise roll. Five, six, seven. And street wise and what? Uh, intellect. Eight, nine. Okay, so you wander around for a little while um, and make your way into what is a kind of larger staging area for ships. There's a few sort of stores, there's a lot of people moving around. There's like a large canteen area where people are sitting down to eat what looks like gruel kind of stuff. That's the kind of people who work there. So you kind of join the queue and then grab a tray. And someone dumps three spoons of varying grey coloured slop on the plate and sort of sit down uh, with some of the people and start to talk to the, the people in the area. Um, people are, are interested in seeing a Yatrin on the station because there aren't many, if any. Um, but people start to talk to you about things. And the general consensus, a lot of people are preoccupied with the safety of being on the station because, as you saw from outside, it's not 100% intact, but most of the main areas are fine. Everywhere you've gone, you've also seen kind of emergency kit sort of stationed around and people sort of clearly recognising where those things are. Um, the feeling about the planet is that half of the people are saying, this is kind of, yeah, whatever, there's some stuff down there. It's probably United Colonies. They set up a research station for this planet like we're doing and it just got knackered over hundreds of years. Um, there are some people who believe that there is some kind of um, deep planetary mining operation that was set up here because of the heavy metal constituents of the planet. Mm. So you've got these two kind of um, aspects. Um, what was the other thing you were looking into? What do people want? What do people want? What do people on this station want? Well, other than the obvious, 
You know, the obvious isn't necessarily always that obvious. I mean, I'd imagined that the obvious was something that they might not have much of and did consider mentioning it when we were back on so Korea. Things like Angela. <laughs> That was the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were doing drugs or sex, or possibly even rock and roll. <laughs> all of, so the, all of the above. So they want um, recreational drugs, not hard, not risk, hard drugs. Because there's it's a serious drugs. element of risk yeah. in their lives, and they don't want to get completely blotto. They just want to take their edge off. They want stuff to help them relax. Yes. They want alcohol. They want holographic videos. Entertainment company? Pleasant, yes, yes. That kind of thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and they want news from Korea. A lot of people feel isolated here. Well, I'll give them a, a bit of news from Korea. Mm-hmm. Let them know what's going on and what's sure. happening yep. when we're leaving. Yep. Um, sort of stuff that I picked up around the, the spaceport and the mm-hmm. TAS. Hotel, place, yeah, yeah. hostel. Yeah. Flash hostel. Yeah. But the flash hostel in which I'd probably be more talking to staff than yes. guests. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we'll let them know a little bit of what's going on on, mm-hmm. on crew there, mm-hmm. um, get an idea of what they want to start putting together a, a sort of shopping list of things that people might need. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. We start to... Form some ideas for trading opportunities. Yeah. Um, you also get an undercurrent of people being annoyed that certain uh, individuals are selected for crewing the laboratory ship headed out to the asteroid belt because it seemed to be quite a lucrative contract if you could get on board. And it seems that lots of people who are connected with Bryce Corporation had preferential treatment. No, okay. That's never happened before. <laughs> That's how corporations work. Okay, so you're, that takes you a little while doing all that, while these guys are, the ship's being unloaded and everyone's prepping. Does anybody have anything else, particular, anything you guys wanted to do? I wanted to, just curious about the Bryce Corp ship, just go okay. have a nosy. Have a nosy, okay. Um, so you head over to that area of the docking, docking bay. You're on the same end. There's different docking ports, mm-hmm. so you can kind of um, make your way towards the area. Uh, and there seems to be a lot of people moving around in that space. Uh, a lot of cargo. Uh, lots of things being loaded. Possibly a sneaker look at the manifest or. Ooh. Something. Okay. Make a stealth roll. Stealth roll. Go team spy. Or do you want to try and sort of? Just sneeze someone into. How do you want to do it? Do you want to, as well. Do you want to kind of pretend to be an official and go along and say, "Oh, can I check your manifest?" Or do you want to sneak up and hide and do it? I think I'll go sneaky. Okay, I can do both. Well, yeah, if I just sneak it, then you might not get a chance to yeah. deceive them. Should deceive first. Then. Yeah, I'll deceive first. Then. If you see first, then I'll be on the lookout for it. Yeah. Don't want to make a distraction for anyone. Yeah, that's true. Distract first. You've gone for the whole nondescript corporate spy look anyway, yeah. so you should be able to. You know enough about Bryce Corp to sound convinced. Sneak yeah. away. Oh, so you could, you could deceive them. You have, do have old Bryce Corp documentation and stuff, so you could, if you needed to, fall back on that. Yeah. So if you make a deception, okay. let me just have a look. Deception and intellect or social. Intellect is A, is that plus plus one? Plus one race. And and deception? It's only one. So what did you get? I got five plus six, so that's only seven. seven. Okay. So you managed to not get a look at the manifest, but you get to have a chat with some of the Bryce um, Corporation um, staff right. who sort of talk to you about what they've been bringing in and what they're taking out. So you get a bit of information rather than the actual yeah, manifest because right. you would have had to have rolled sort of a 10 right. to get that, get your hands on it. Okay. Um, but they, they talk to you about, they brought in loads of food, loads of surprise, basic electronics gear, like spares and stuff like that, loads of different things. 
Um, they're taking samples um, and um, some of the materials from some ruins down on the planet back to Korea. And they're, but they're loading up and they've got to wait for a, a couple of days while some of it's being lifted up to orbit. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See <laughs> I'll make sure I get all my security passes back off the crew. Oh yeah, they well they oh, sorry, back off the passengers. Okay. I shall I shall tap my my well actually I shall tap my my scanner and be annoyed that uh, that someone's still in the turret who I know is definitely not in the turret because yeah. if I saw him leave the ship. Words will be had later. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, uh, Captain Inglisa, Commander, sorry, Inglisa are turning to the scientists who are chatting about some of the details, the arrangement, your account details, looking at the data that's been provided. So that takes a little while, it's a bit of a discussion. Um, forward to ask, because oh, you're going to be around for that conversation on the bridge because you're doing sensors. Yeah. Or, okay. That's interesting. Okay, cool. Probably won't interject my little one, no, surely. Okay. <laughs> Splendid to the background. Yeah, like Jerry's doing. Basically, trying to see if there's anything they need taking back to Korea. Basically, trying to drum up cargo for the way home. Oh, yeah, um, interesting. Especially um, mail. Well, there may be uh, some passengers because there's like a rotation, you know, um, every couple of months. People come out and then they head back. Because it's, I mean, it's fairly. You know, tough here, especially now on, on the surface. Um, but yes, there, there may be some cargo. Uh, Bryce Corporation has got a, uh, a, an office here, uh, and the scout service often have things to be moved around. There's a bit of mining going on. Um, I think we have representatives of the Star Harvesters Guild coming recently, trying to. Secure some mining rights in the asteroid belt, but we turned them away. Um, but yes, uh, uh, you're welcome. I, I don't really concern myself much with the trading on the on the floor of the station. I'm sort of I'm building a large climate model. I can't. Yeah, the holograph is amazing. The, the 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 complexity of the storms on the surface and the speeds at which they get to. I would advise you to be very careful when you go down to the surface, but obviously your ship is fairly well suited for that kind of thing, rather than a small shuttle. Okay, um, well, perhaps you could point us in the direction of people that would be are the best people to discuss trade and cargo with, as well as passengers. So, so I think there's a trade forum on the data link for the station, where you can bid on Lots that need to go to Korea. Um, there are also uh, Hawley people, but there's not a lot of corporations here. There's a few, most people are working towards fixing the station and examining the planet. Sometimes we bring up samples from the surface that we need to take back, uh, and those can be small or large. Um, I will check to see if we have any of those lots that, that need to be carried. And obviously anything sensitive you know that we will take directly to the Korea Council? Of course. I Sensitively? Mean, yes, of course. We have, um, we've been waiting for a, a CCDF ship to give a secure packet to. Um, so we have uh, uh, a few containers that we need taken back with our latest update on the survey and the scientific data and my latest version of my model well if you wish them taken back to Korea that's of course something that we can provide well with discretion yes. well of course it's not something I would normally charter a Bryce Corporation ship to do but I was, it was looking like I would have to uh, but now that you're here it's uh, that's good uh, we can entrust that to someone that we know um, and who's loyal to the council. Um, excellent, right, well, I have some uh, more readings to gather and my model to attend to. 
However, if you are happy to engage on this short mission, um, then whenever you're ready to head down to the surface, then please do. Um, I would advise you to be a bit careful. Obviously, as I said, atmosphere is quite turbulent. Um, the wind speeds can get up sort of 300 miles per hour. Shouldn't be a problem for, for a starship, but just to let you know. I think in the area you're heading to, it's quite mountainous. So sometimes the wind speeds can pick up or die down suddenly. Um, so it's a high precipitation, is that the right word? <laughs> she laughs. <laughs> um, in, in that area. So uh, again, be careful. We might want to wear. Which for the day drug consent is sometimes acid. Yes. Excellent. Right. Well, thank you very much. We will transfer the 10,000 credits um, once you leave. I'm assuming we've received payment for... All your other stuff, you've sort of been looking out the corner of your eye and you've seen your... Ding, ding, ding. I'm deadly, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so... Okay. Ding, ding, ding. So we're starting to get some of the credits. Okay. Don't forget the 10,000 credits. It's selling, look. Okay. I'm assuming we're about to leave the trip now. Before we head to the surface, it might be worth us making a few quick inquiries with regards to trade, as people often need time to get stuff ready. Mm-hmm. So we can make the inquiries before we head to the surface, so it should be ready uh, when we return. I just think we need to work out when we're going to leave. But yeah, we can certainly. We can, certainly, we can certainly prep the brokers here, so yeah. we can certainly contact the brokers and tell them. You are, already have a few uh, mm. emails in your inbox mm. um, as people see the opportunity to get things back to Korea. Yeah. I, imagine the, I imagine that the fact that there's so few ships means that you probably find people would hunt for us rather than... I mean, have well, to well, make sure that all of the brokers know we're here. Mm. And, okay. and we've got all the crew back. There aren't many. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm working. <laughs> um, I say I wish I could give you some more clarity on how long I'll be, but until I see it, really, is how long this piece is true. Um, do we need any specialists? I'll wait till they finish their meeting and return. Yeah, it's basically going to be a do we need any specialist gear for going down there? Yeah. So you need filters for the surface. Yeah. To breathe least. properly, but there's periodic uh, extreme weather events that you could do with sort of hazardly suits or environmental suits to protect you. With the back suits, not so And I've got... Yeah, 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 oh. but just back suits quite like... Yeah, wow. they're bulky, and it, unless you've trained as a wearing back suits... Yeah. They're, yeah, they're tricky to do that. Are there, are, there are there any combat environment suits for sale? Conversation. Combat environment suits. Hey, yeah, yeah that'd, that'd be a good idea. very good at protecting... What kind of a genius would buy a combat environment suit? Well, that's they're very good at protecting against us. Me I'm wondering where my back suit is. I can kill. <laughs> there is one combat environment suit up for trade on the forum, and it's Cherix. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm fine. On a twelve, it's Cherix. <laughs> oh, it's not okay. Cherix. Um, excellent. So, how much is it? It's a thousand in the middle. That's what's in TL10. It is TL10. Right, and uh, can't give them a. Oh. Right. So from the United Colonies station, from the resources that were found there, someone's obviously been able to scrounge up and find enough components and elements to put together a combat. Some sort of scientists and people that are doing yeah. yeah, got good yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I will purchase a combat environment suit so I'm protected while on the surface. Okay. But there's only one in there. Yes, there's only one for okay. sale. So you can get environment suits. But that's for extreme weather events. Mm-hmm. It doesn't always happen. So you can go around in body armour and hoods and that kind of thing, and you'd probably be okay for a while. Yeah. Okay, um, actually, take it off the, the ship's money so we can basically just have like a store of okay. environment suits. Yeah, I'm going to to help you breathe then. Oh, so I've got the suit. I might need a mask. Has everyone got filters? You can get filters. How much filters? Yeah. Um, I brought proper kit with me because I knew what I was getting into potentially. Mm-hmm. Um, I've also got um, uh, evacuation, uh, excavation tools, but I need someone to help me carry them. 
Because they are. looks at the eight foot show rigs. They are considerably <laughs> beyond. Just get like a skiff or something. Yeah. Or just get like a like a branch of air raft or something. Well, yeah. We'll yeah. Assuming they're going to provide us with equipment to get that with. They said to be careful with grab equipment. They're giving you filters. They'll give you all filters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they, and if you need to be a bit careful with grammar equipment down there, because apparently if the wind speed gets up, they can be uh, liberally spread around the landscape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, we're just being paid to take some, take you down there. If uh, further equipment is needed, I'm sure they can provide it for you. That's true. But as I said, I'll need someone to help with the kit in the immediate future. Uh, oh, yeah. That's I'm sure we'll still what husk or uh, a. I can help with carrying it. That's all right. Uh, there is a nearby scientific outpost with some resources if you do want oh, to go. Oh, if they need more than that, we can talk to them, can't we? Well, on the surface, I'm assuming that armour is outpost 31. All the protective armour is mine. Protective armour and weaponry? Yeah. Yeah, when you get out to the surface, you're, fine. you're going to an un- unpopulated, uninhabited, unchecked area near a mountain range where there's some weird ruins. Okay. I think I'll wear the back suit. Okay. <laughs> I'll wear the newly acquired protective suit thing. Okay. It's been delivered in a nice box, a blue and green rice court box, mm-hmm. to your to your ship. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. So you've all got your stuff mm-hmm. all ready. Okay. You're given clearance to leave the station carefully. Commander, I've had a bit of a poke around on station. Got a bit to low ground of what's going on down there. Uh, people don't know a lot about what's going on, but there's some suspicion that there's some deep mining for rare elements going on. Uh, we've also got an idea of the sort of things that people up here want, not just the things that they need. Mm. It's very opportunity. Yeah. So we can talk about that. Talk about that when, uh, when we don't have passengers. Yeah. I'm assuming we'll close it. Are there any passengers coming in? Yeah. You've got, yeah, all your passengers are gone, the cargo's been emptied, the mail's been taken, they're uploading it into the. Is there anything that they need taken down to the surface that we could provide, you know, a cargo for? And there. It's obviously a financial rebate. Yeah. Hang on. Speak. Yeah. That's a good point. It's possible that some people want stuff moved down to the surface. Yeah. So people, equipment, material, people, other people, people. that aren't me. Yeah, we probably don't need to provide them statements and everything. I suspect that in the short journey down they will not have a, uh, an economic impact on the life support systems. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, they won't. Oh, uh, they might be willing to give us a few oh, credits yeah. for the average. <laughs> Maybe Especially if they're not you know, supposed to be a small yeah. number of credits. Unless you want to look at it. Oh, it's going to be buffeted all to hell in the shuttle going down to the sandwich. Oh, what's arriving, of course, the comfort and luxury that is the. There's a team world. of 11 scientists who are bound for the surface. Uh, and the. That sounds like a basic pack in the passage. Could be, that's for like a whole week. So they're willing to pay you sort of 100 credits a go to. To f- go down to the surface. Any material needing to be taken down? No, they just need uh, a, a rotation of stuff just that's not the outpost, to the nearby outpost. Is there anything going down under the table? <laughs> ah, maybe streetwise wrong. Commander, are you okay with things going down? But nothing. To, uh, well, I'm, I'm not talking about like, arms shit. Shit doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it really does not matter because that's uh, five. Well, Six, it's seven. That could be really bad though. Oh, it's seven. Yes, oh, seven. 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 Yeah. Yeah. three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that could be like this number two. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, basically, we just the, the crew are a good customer and we don't want to piss them off. You don't really know you yet. Yeah. You've. you've Bumped into a few people that you talked to earlier, but they're a bit sort of like. Mm. 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 Fast their point. Yeah, that's basically the point. <laughs> the crew are a good customer. We don't want to yeah. piss them off. We can do less legitimate things when we're not in crew space. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Cool. So you are given um, clearance to leave dock, uh, and you are cut off in the station. 
as you head down into the atmosphere. So I'm like to make piloting roll. Yes, as we're heading down, can we do a focus sensor thing to give, give me a better okay. indication so of the atmosphere I'm flying down? Start flying to. down towards the planet, and you can see that um, the atmosphere is very thick. There's um, storm clouds moving around, and you can see a, a large chain, this kind of tear of mountains across this vast area of the northern continent, uh, which is where you've been given the coordinates for this area down somewhere down there. And so can we use the census to get a better idea of the conditions I'm flying in? Sure. Because right. obviously that would give me a, make my pull up job easier. Yes. Maybe <coughs> add your effect onto all your Take pilot. away from your <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> Depending on how you roll. Double one. Descending. Education reflect. Double one. Uh, intellect. Oh, yeah. Set coordinates for one kilometre below the circle. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold up, man! Hold up! <laughs> is our civilian sensor thing, is active thing, are they cancelling out again? Yes. So, I can just go with the straight roll. Um, so that would be the... the, the five. Four, 13. 13, okay. So, you have an effect of 5. So, you scan the air and you can see intricate details of the cloud deck and mm -hmm. the pattern of the wind moving through the mountain range. And this information relayed to you gives you a good idea of how to maybe traverse that area. You can see some winds up to about 100 miles an hour. Higher up, but lower down, because you've made such a good roll, you can see that it seems to be a bit of a calm mm -hmm. around the coordinates that have been provided. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, I will Okay. So, do I get plus five? <laughs> 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 That's a four, but I do okay. know. It's effect helping it helped like it Sorry? I thought effect only helped it have like a limited. Yes. What's the stat it? It doesn't add like just the I can't add that much. So, succeeding with effect one to five is a plus one. Okay, so. What are the five? So, what's the. It's pilot's hand. What's the skill? Can I assume you don't? Yes. Okay, so plus another four, so that becomes nine. Okay, it's not uh, massively difficult, it's an average task, so you need eight or more. So you head down, you fly down into the atmosphere, and suddenly there's the vibration of the hull. There's, this is a bit in the film where the sound returns, <laughs> and the, the nose starts to heat up a bit. Uh, you angle incorrectly, um, and you head down into the atmosphere towards uh, this mountain range. As you do, you can see that the whole area, some kind of ancient flows of what looked like lava or something around the area. It's all very gray. It's all quite rocky boulders, um, recent ejector from other events kind of sort of dotted around the area. You can see as you get in closer, there are a series of small shapes in the Lava flows and rocks and mud sort of poking up and out of the ground here, there, and everywhere. And these tie in with the sensor scans, you kind of overlay it, and you can see, yep, well, I'm coming to the right area. It's kind of, oh, hang on, yep, there we go. Um, and you have some subterranean data on. On it near the dome. On <clears throat> some sort of tunnels underneath the ground as well. It's all got a bit of alien versus predator. <laughs> <laughs> and then slightly north, of this collection and sort of tucked into the the, the sweep of the, the mountain range, there is some dome structure that's been observed just beneath the surface with some sort of central housing, something machinery like within it. And there should be some noise down there. Okay. So you're gonna fly down yeah. to the surface. Okay. So you come in sweeping in, giving a bit of a view around the area, checking the... There's no um, animals moving around. This place is pretty uh, barren at this um, latitude. So you're kind of alone. It's very stark. It's grey and grey and grey. You know, clouds, mountains, rocks, all that kind of stuff, screen and all those kind of things. Um, and you bring the ship into land. Make a easy piloting roll to land on a ship safely. It's a four plus. 
that many. Okay. So you find a fairly flat, 15, 15. fairly level area and less bouldery to to extend your little landing struts and land the ship. Incredibly well, 15. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the engines slow down to the like low background hum. You hear the system. You can see out of the window of the bridge this vast mountain in front of you, and poking up out the the boulders and the ground ahead, these low structures. Is there loads of dust in the air that's sort of blowing across the screen? There is a bit of dust in the air that's blowing. Across the screen. Yeah, hundred mile winds. Yes. <laughs> No, that's higher up. Yeah. So the high, the strong winds are higher up here. There's kind of a rattling of dust and grains against the screen, um, and you guys start to suit up and get ready to go out onto the surface of Cusk. I'll um, I'll download a, a 5k map. Okay. From, from the my, uh, okay. my um, sure. sleeve. Okay. Cool. And I think we'll leave the episode there. Um, with you guys about to set foot on Cusk and head off towards this strange uh, remnant, possibly remnant ruins. Um, right, so thanks for watching. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, we will be filming another episode soon, hopefully before the new year, we'll see. Um, but please like, comment and subscribe. Please check out our setting videos. We've got a playlist of setting videos. Please check out the character creation and team creation if you haven't. Gives a bit more information on the background which came out in the episode, which I thought was cool. Um, and we'll see you soon. So thanks very much and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.